Okay, this sermon is entitled, Satan Knows That the Bible is True. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses, all right, Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 87 reads, His foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. A glorious thing are... Oh, excuse me, glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God, Selah. Now let's turn back to Matthew chapter 4, or turn over to Matthew chapter 4, rather, in the New Testament. Let's take a look at the fact that Satan understands and knows that the word of God is true. Matthew chapter 4, and let's take a look at verse 4. It says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, Jesus Jesus Christ is making it very clear that the Word of God is true. The Word of God is something we need. And believe it or not, whenever he quotes, you know, Scripture, like for instance, he's quoting Deuteronomy chapter number 8 and verse 3. If we keep reading, he's quoting Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 16. Eventually, Satan just, just flees. And that's why it says in verse 11, Then the devil leaveth him, And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now this lets us know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that that Satan himself just knows how powerful God's word is. And that's why Satan is deceiving everybody. That's why Satan wants people to stay away from the word of God. That's why he actually, in some cases, takes the word away. And everyone out there who's believing in some type of a non-theistic, you know, they have some type of non-theistic worldview, or they maybe they're an atheist or an agnostic, or maybe they're, they just believe in, a, a, you know, some false religion, you know, like Judaism, or Catholicism, or, or, or Islam. These people have been lied to by Satan, okay? And the, the Bible's clear on that, because Satan knows the Bible is true. Now, in Luke chapter 8, we see an example of this. It says in verse um, 12, it says, Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil... And taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Now, in this case, Satan is getting the word away from people because he knows how powerful it is. Satan knows just how powerful the gospel is. And he knows that if if a person believes on Jesus Christ, they will be saved instantaneously and irrevocably, irreversibly. So Satan has to get this message, you know, away from people. That's why all these people out there believe, you know, false. They believe that there's more to it than faith. Or they believe that it's faith plus works. Or some people believe that you have to continue to believe in order to be saved. Well, it doesn't say that they, lest they should continue to believe and be saved. It just says, lest they should believe and be saved. This tells us that salvation takes place instantaneously, like I've already said, and it's at the moment you believe. It's not later on, after you keep believing. It's at the moment you believe on Christ, you're saved forever. He that believeth on the Son hath, present tense, everlasting life. John 3.36, the first part of the verse. So Satan knows just how important it is to get the word away from people because he knows it's true. Now turn over to James. Let's take a look at James in chapter 2. These verses get taken out of context in a lot of cases by false prophets and unsaved people. And what we, what we do see from James 2 is that the devil knows just how real you know, the, the, the Bible is. And we see in verse 19, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils or demons also believe and tremble. Now, this is not saying that they believed on Jesus Christ. This is just saying they, that, the, that the devils believe that there is one God. This is called monotheism. And of course they believe, because they have full, they have full knowledge of this. They also know that they're headed for hell, and that they have no way of being redeemed. The devil and his angels, the fallen angels, cannot be saved. So, of course, they know that there is one God. But but you have to remember that the only people that can be saved, of course, are people, human beings. You know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So, yes, if a person believes on Christ, they are saved forever. Because Jesus Christ did not die for demons. He did not die for devils. He died for people. He died for sinners. So we have to understand that the devil knows the Bible is true. The devil's also the greatest liar that exists. Turn over to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. We see that not only does the devil know the Bible is true, he's also going to try to convince people it's not. 
Anytime a person does not believe that the Bible is the word of God, or if a person does not believe in God, they think that, well, uh, maybe atheism is correct, or maybe evolution is correct, or you know, maybe these other you know, secular theories are correct, it's because they've been lied to by Satan. Now we see this in verse 44 of, of John chapter 8, Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, you know, for he is a liar and the father of it. Not only is Satan a liar, he's the king liar, he's the chief liar, he's the father of all lies. He's the number one liar. So we see right there that the devil lies, the devil deceives. Now, if we turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, now one of the reasons why I'm preaching this sermon is to let people know that no, the reason why you don't believe the Bible is because you've been deceived, you've been lied to. And a lot of people, they want to they try to you know, malign God because there's evil out in this world. And they say, well, there can't be a God with evil, you know, they can't coexist. But see, the reason why we have evil is because of Satan. Well, Satan is God's adversary. That's what the word Satan actually means, adversary. And that's why we have all this confusion and all this doubt and all, the, all, this, you know, all these false religions is because Satan is out there lying to people. It's not a coincidence that we have you know, false versions of Christianity. It's, it's just because you know, Satan is a liar and this is what he has come up with. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, we see in verse 11 that as believers in Christ, after we study God's word, the Bible commands us to grow. It commands us to grow in grace and we should be learning God's word on a daily basis. After we study God's word, we should know how Satan works. And it says in verse 11, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now, what are some of Satan's devices? Well, number one, religion. You know, false worldviews. Number two, deception. Satan uses false prophets. The Bible refers to them as tares among, you know, the, the sheep. Goat among the, among the sheep. Tares among, you know, wheat. So we see that Satan is a deceiver. He's a liar. He, he's out there destroying, trying to, to destroy lives. And he's just, you know, somebody that we should, we should know how he works. It says we are not ignorant of his devices. Now, what can we do about Satan? Well, we see the answer in James. The answer is found in James chapter number 4. Number one, we get in God's word and we quote God's word. That's what Jesus Christ did in, in Matthew chapter 4 and also in Luke chapter 4 when he was fighting him off. You know, with, he used God's word. Satan was tempt, trying to tempt him. Well, we, we can do the same thing. We use God's word, and it says in verse 6, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. We can resist the devil. We don't have to put up with his garbage. The devil's gonna, going to attack you know, a person's mind and try to tell them all these different things that are not true and convince them of a bunch of lies and mendacities and falsehoods. And what we can do is say, I don't believe that. I'm not going to stand for that, and I'm going to resist it. And, I'm, and then de the devil has to flee, because God's word says, he will flee from you. Not he might flee from you, or he can flee from you, but he will flee from you. So what you do is you get into God's word, you quote the scripture, you draw nigh to God. That's how you get closer to God. And then Satan will leave. And then you tell Satan, go back where you belong. Go back to hell where you belong, where you came from. And that's where he's going in the end anyway. He's going he's gonna to burn in hell forever. So yes, the devil knows the Bible is true. Okay, that's why the demons are trembling. They know they're going to hell. But as believers, we should know that the Bible is true as well. We should also know that Satan's out there deceiving people, and we need to you know, not fall for his junk. Okay, here are some of the ways that Satan has lied to people. You know, Calvinism. He's lied to people about the nature and character of God, the love of God. He's lied to people about, you know, God's existence. Atheism is a way Satan has lied. He tries to tell people there is no God. He's also convinced these same people that, that he doesn't exist. You know, the greatest trick that the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he doesn't exist. And he's lied to people about their salvation, making them think, you know, you, you have to live a certain way to be saved and that you're not good enough. And of course you're not good enough. That's why we're saved by grace. And he's lied to people about, you know, lordship salvation is a big fat lie. Arminianism's a lie, Catholicism's a lie, Jehovah's false witnesses, that system is a lie, Mormonism is a lie, all this stuff are lies. Okay, 
the, the salvation is by grace through what Jesus Christ has done for us. Jesus Christ died on the cross. He was buried and rose again. Satan does not want people knowing that. Satan does not want people knowing that it's just by faith alone in Christ alone that one is saved. You know, he does not want people knowing the simplicity that's it, that's it, you know, of Christ. That's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, let's close with that, he's doing everything he can to convince people, you know, of a lie. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and let's take a look at verses um, 3. Just stop at verse 3. We'll read verse 3, and that's it. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve. Now, we see right here that Satan is a, is a beguiler. He's a trickster. He's a liar. He beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. If a message that comes out of the Bible, especially... You know, especially regarding salvation. If the message is complex or taxing or you know convoluted or difficult, then it's not of God. It's a corruption. Okay? Salvation is very simple. You know, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's very simple. Come like a small child and receive the gift of eternal life. If the message is not that, it's of Satan. It's a corruption. It's a counterfeit. So we see right there that Satan is the one that beguiles people, he tricks people, and he lies to people, and he's the one behind all these false religions. So, like I said, we should not be, you know, in the dark about how he operates, and we should basically be ready to defend him off at all times. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.